and still is a model of good behavior. He doesn't smoke, he doesn't swear, he leaves the vodka out of his screwdrivers, gets his hair cut regularly, and when he played with the Green Bay Packers, he often insisted that his teammates put their dirty towels in the laundry bin to make the team manager's job easier. Now don't get the idea that Bart Starr was a wimp, because he wasn't. In tough pressure situations, he filled the soft spots with steel. He played in six championship games and won five. He once threw 294 consecutive passes without an interception, and that's a record that might never be broken. But perhaps the most significant fact about Bart Starr was that he had the ability to adjust, to work and to grow, and most importantly, to eventually become what his quiet but driving ambition demanded, to be a champion. In 1958, the Green Bay Packers were the worst team in the NFL. Their quarterback was a shy, courteous young man named Brian Bartlett Starr, who seemed to be living proof of the old adage, nice guys finish last. We beat Green Bay 40 to nothing, and Bart just had a miserable game, and uh, the fans were booing him in Green Bay, if you can imagine that, and uh, after losing 40 to nothing, instead of, you know, ducking his head and, and running for the tunnel, Bart came over and congratulated us. Great guy. In 1959, the Packers hired coach Vince Lombardi, a determined winner who had no patience for gracious losers. Well, I think that Coach Lombardi probably felt that I wasn't strong enough to be uh, the leader that he was looking for. He was volatile, explosive, impulsive, loud, abrasive, uh, nasty, if you will, and I wasn't. Probably I gave the impression to him uh, that I wasn't uh, as strong a leader maybe as, as he had hoped for. But what he didn't know was what was underneath. I really think that performance always speaks much louder than words. In 1960, Starr's steady performance earned him the starting role and the underdog Packers fought their way to the top of the Western Conference. While running backs Jim Taylor, number 31, and Paul Horning became national heroes, the quarterback who gave them the ball was ignored and often blamed for the team's failures. By his opponents, Starr's faith and courage were constantly tested. He stood up to the punishment and abuse with a quiet defiance, and even Lombardi soon learned that Starr's gentle nature gave no hint of the fire that glowed within. A lot of people mistake kindness for weakness, and uh, Bart Starr stood up to Lombardi every time he should have. I told him, I said, look, coach, I said, I can take all of the chewing you want to dish out. And I said, I understand your personality, and that's all well and good. And I said, that doesn't bother me. I said, but what does bother me is the fact that you're telling the team one thing, that you're expecting certain things of your leaders, of your quarterbacks, and you expect me to go out there and lead them. And I said, I can't do that if you're going to chew me out in front of them. I said, now, if I've got a chewing out coming, fine, but do it in the privacy of this office where you apologize to me when you know you're wrong. I said, otherwise, don't ever expect me to go out there and be your leader. And he never, ever raised his voice to me again. The competitive fires in Bart Star were well banked and deeply hidden. But Lombardi fanned them to a blaze, and Starr changed from a man who used to lean on his team to one who could lead it. Starr was a player that Lombardi never thought would make it, but few coaches ever got more out of a player than Lombardi got out of Starr. Starr always seemed to me to be an extension of Lombardi on the field. Bart was, I think, the 
the perfect coach's quarterback in a sense that if Lombardi said, here are the 6,000 things I want you to do, Bart would go out and do probably almost all of those 6,000 things. And he always played the percentages. Smart percentage player. Not a gambler. In other words, if, if he had a, a back who was covering a receiver tight, the ball was always low. Bart knew that there was a chance that the ball wouldn't be caught, but no chance that it would be intercepted if it was thrown that way. Bart Starr is probably one of the purest gentlemen you'll ever want to meet. But on the football field, he'll cut your heart out and show it to you. Uh, he probably completed more fourth down and one passes than anybody in pro football. People don't remember him as that, but I have because I'm on the sidelines and listen to the discussion and Coach Lombardi say, what's he going to call? Is he going to run it on fourth? And I said, Coach, you can bet he's going to throw it. I think the quality of a great leader, of a great quarterback, is being able to deliver when you have to. Anybody can play when, uh, when there's really nothing at stake, uh, regardless of the game, regardless of the situation. But I really think the, the measure of the player is how well he plays under pressure when you have to win. Above all, Bart Starr was the consummate pressure player, and he proved it by winning five championship games, more than any quarterback in history. In 1966, Lombardi's Packers won their second straight NFL championship game and fourth league title when Starr threw four touchdown passes to defeat the Dallas Cowboys. Two weeks later, in the first Super Bowl, the Packers defeated the Kansas City Chiefs 35-10. valuable player and the coach who once doubted him had by now become his biggest fan and together they went on to make pro football history in the 1967 championship game a small step for Bart Starr was a giant leap for the Green Bay Packers who became the first and only team in NFL history to win three consecutive championship games. In the second Super Bowl, the Packers crushed the Raiders 33-14, to and Starr was again named the game's most valuable player. Bart Starr was made, not born, and the lessons of his life seem clear. One of my favorite quotes is from William Jennings Bryan, and I think it sums up how I feel about my career and what I was able to accomplish when he said that destiny is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. It is not something to be wished for. It is something to be attained. <laughs> 